morning thank you very much for joining me and welcome to this book club video for September book club for those who are new around here or who don't know or haven't watched one of these videos previously I run a monthly book club where we read a book and then discuss it it's all based in a Facebook group which I will link in the description box below if you want to come along and join us today I've got a bit of a library book haul for you as well but let's start with this month's book which was Jojo Moyes, The Giver of Stars. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed it a lot. I was quite relieved that I enjoyed it because I haven't enjoyed the last two months' books. I haven't managed to read um, either of them. Um, I did give last month's a good go, but I didn't get through it. Um, but yeah, this I really very much enjoyed. It's very different. It, I've got a set of six questions, six questions I think, no, seven questions today, which um, I will also be posting in the book club group so you guys can let me know what you thought of it for those who have read along with us this month um, or else let me know in the comments here if you enjoyed it or not whatever is easiest for you. So let's get into the questions and the first one was Jojo Moyes visited Kentucky several times whilst writing and researching this book. Did the sense of place and character feel authentic to you? It absolutely did. I had pictures in my mind's eye all the way through of um, the places they were talking about, the town, um, the mountains, the countryside. Um, but the characters also felt very real. Um, the main characters particularly, Alice and Marjorie, but even the peripheral characters, for example, Mrs. Brady, I could see her as quite a matronly, sort of um, late middle-aged woman, um, very officious, and I had a real picture of her in my head. And I think when you have a vision in your head of something, it means the writer has created it really well so yeah I thought the sense of character and place were both really authentic so hats off to Jojo Moyes for that as far as I'm concerned. Question two is did you know anything about the real life pack horse librarians of Kentucky prior to reading this novel? I didn't know I'd never heard of them it was an entirely new concept to me I believe that they're having researched a little bit there was another book written about the Pack Horse Librarians of Kentucky, very close in publishing date to this one, and there was a little bit of controversy over which was the better one. I haven't read the other one, I can't even remember what it's called now, but um, no, I had never heard of the, this Pack Horse Librarian thing prior to reading this. It was set in 1937, I think, so just pre-Second pre World War. Um, and then the second part of that question is, why did Alice decide to join these librarians on their quest? And I think having moved to a different country, a different continent even, um, she didn't have many friends. Um, the people in the town were quite suspicious of her. They probably never come across a British person before. Um, her marriage wasn't particularly happy. She didn't have a sense of herself, I don't think. So the opportunity to do this, also she could ride, which I think was quite an... Um, uh, she was quite an experienced writer so I think that was quite a big part of her decision initially but just for, to have something for herself a sense of belonging a sense of purpose in her, this new country that was her new home I think question three is what did you think about Marjorie's war with Van Cleve and the subplot about the mines and the slurry dam were you engaged with that storyline I thought that was quite an interesting subplot. Um, it's a whole nother story, isn't it? Um, the whole um, workers' rights and there was a thread of racism also sort of threaded through there as well. I felt like it could almost have been a standalone story in its own right, the whole, particularly the mine. Um, in fact, I would like to see Jojo Moore's write a book about that. I think it would be quite interesting. Um, yeah, so I was quite engaged with that subplot. I don't always find subplots particularly necessary or interesting, but I think it did give a bit more colour to the story and a sense of the times and the sense of how people's feelings were in those times about various things. So I thought it did add to the story and it was something that I would be very happy to see explored more, even in a standalone novel. Question four was, did you enjoy Alice's slow burn romance with Fred? I did. I, I mean, it was obvious they were going to get together at the end. It was going to be a bit of a happy ending type thing, wasn't it? But um, yeah, I, I did enjoy it. I thought it was nice. I thought it didn't go on too much about it, but it was always there in the background, wasn't it? Which was quite nice. And I think there was enough 
going on in the rest of the book in terms of storyline that it wasn't the the slow burn romance wasn't the focus of the book as such it was just another thread running through it so I liked the fact that it was there in the background and I liked the fact they got their happy ending question five was Marjorie goes to jail for the murder of Clem McCulloch were you surprised that his daughter ended up helping Marjorie to get out of jail um, I thought it was quite a convenient way to tie it up and to have Marjorie freed and vindicated wasn't it it, it was um, perhaps out of the whole story that was the most I want to say poetic license but I don't think I mean do I mean poetic license it was the most um yeah, I guess poetic license bit in terms of make it, but carrying the story forward. Uh, I felt like it perhaps wasn't particularly likely that it would have been so easy to convince someone who spent their whole life in, pretty much in this cabin away from people to pop down to town, sit in a court in front of a load of people and, um, you know, but talk and, um, and also to drop your father right in it you know dead or not I think thought it was a bit of a stretch of the imagination however because I'd enjoyed so much of the you know the rest of the book and I wanted Marjorie to be vindicated and be reunited with her baby daughter uh, I was quite happy to go along with that as a as a thread question six was what do you think about the ending I liked the ending I thought it was everything was tied up quite neatly it was as I expected there weren't any loose ends um I like the fact that um Bennett got married again I didn't think Bennett was a bad chap I thought he was um I thought he was just you know under his father's thumb really I didn't think he had an awful lot of bad it could have done with a bit of a more get up and go but um yeah I was quite glad he got his happy ending as well um I thought the father was absolutely vile the father was written almost as um you know Van Cleve Senior was written almost as a pantomime villain he literally had no redeeming qualities at all did he but um yeah I thought the ending was good final question was have you read any other jo novels by Jojo Moyes and how does this compare to her other ones now I've seen this touted as her first historical novel and it's actually not she's done to my knowledge at least one other historical novel and one that was a dual time frame novel I think that's called the girl that was left behind um or the girl he left behind um that was a dual time frame set in current times and historical times um i've also read me before you which i think is the one of jojo moyes that everybody knows and i've read another contemporary one which i can't remember the name of so yes i have read quite a few of her books i've enjoyed them all pretty much um i didn't want to read the sequel of me before you because i felt that it was a lovely standalone story and i've never actually explored the sequel but i'm just thinking recently if i see it in a charity shop i might pick it up and have a look in fact i think there's two sequels now but yeah overall a good read this month i enjoyed it now next month's book we haven't yet finished voting on at the time of filming this I always try and film these as soon as I finish the book otherwise I forget I move on to another book and forget what I've read about <laughs> so um I always film them at the end so it's a bit earlier in the month than you're going to see this but um yeah well what I'm going to do is link the book in the description box below when that we're going to read for next month when the video goes live so I will put that information all down there Right, let's have a little peruse of my library book haul, shall we? I um, went to the library for the first time and had a lovely browse. It was so nice. I think I mentioned this in a Five on Friday video. And I picked out some books and I will show you what I picked out. And the first one was The Book of You. And it, the subtitle is Daily Micro Actions for a Happy, Happier healthier you and it says on the back get ready to start living a better life for you your life is the sum of the small actions you do every day and every choice you make is significant and it's got that sort of the format of it little tiny bite-sized things it's just little ideas of things to do every day and I haven't explored this very fully yet but I've sort of flicked through and read some bits and pieces and um actually lots of really good advice in here there's all sorts of different 
subjects, um, ideas. They've got different sections. They've got mind, they've got love, they've got move, they've got food, and they've got just little thing, mic little micro things that you can do. For example, they've got what we wear can give us a major confidence boost. Today, wear something that you really like and makes you feel really good, look good, feel great. That's just a great bit of advice, isn't it? I like that. Um, there's a two minute workout one here. The gluteus maximus is the biggest muscle in your body and it burns energy very quickly. Squats are a great way to activate your glutes and get your bu bu blood pumping. Rattle out 10 squats anytime, anywhere to give yourself an energy boost. And they've got anticipating future fun is an easy way to improve your mood and broaden your perspective from the daily routine. Put on your adventure hat and plan a getaway, a special event, a night out or an exciting change in your life. What are you looking forward to? And it's just little prompts for things that don't take a lot of effort that can improve your day and I really like that idea. Um, I need to actually sit down and spend some time with this book and um, yeah I really like the idea of it. The next one I picked up is Helen High Water by Sean Conway. It says, one man's attempt to swim the length of Britain. On the back, it says, Sean Conway set out from Land's End to be the first person ever to swim the length of Britain. On their tiny, leaky 26-foot yacht, Sean and his three crew members faced bad weather, seasickness, and the inevitable pressures of living in close proximity for months. This sounds like a really interesting adventure and I love this type of book where people do amazing survivalist feats so very much up my street so I'm looking forward to that one. This is next on my list to read. Then I actually found sitting on the shelf something that's been on my Amazon wish list for a while and it's called The Choice and it is by Edith Egger, Eger, don't know how you pronounce that one. And this is set during the Second World War. It's 1944 and 16 year old ballerina Edith is sent to Auschwitz. Separated from her parents on arrival, she endures unimaginable experiences, including being made to dance, dance for the infamous Joseph Mengele. When the camp is finally liberated, she is pulled from a pile of bodies barely alive. The horrors of the Holocaust did not break Edith. In fact, they helped her learn to live again with a life-affirming strength and a truly remarkable resilience. The choice is her unforgettable story. It shows that hope can flower in the most unlikely places. And I am really looking forward to this. I love a World War II book and one that is true, even though it sounds a little bit harrowing, is uh, certainly something that's of great interest to me so um, I'll let you know how I get on with that. The next one um, I've read about half of and I've just put it down I'm not going to read any more of it it is called Knee Deep in Life it's by a lady called Laura Belbin who started out as a blogger that was the name of her blog Knee Deep in Life and now has an Instagram account um, and I'll read you the back it says if you're reading this wondering if you're the only human in the world with sandpaper for eyeballs and a bikini line hairier than a chimpanzee sees chimpanzee's chin don't worry it's nothing a good bout of veet won't fix stop fuck the perfection <laughs> um, knee deep in life is laura's fearless and filthy account of holding it all together and letting it all hang out i quite enjoyed the first couple of chapters very amusing and funny she does a lot of swearing um so that <laughs> wouldn't be for everybody um However, I got about halfway through and it had got a little bit repetitive and her style was beginning to grate on me. To be fair, I don't think I'm the demographic this is aimed at. I think it's aimed at um, mothers of young children more so. But yeah, I think as a blog, I can see it working really well. As a book, not so much for me. So I quite enjoyed the first couple of chapters, but yeah, that one I wouldn't recommend. The final three are all cookery books. This, I thought, looked lovely. I love a jacket potato. Who does not love a jacket potato? And it's called Piled High Potatoes. And there's delicious and nutritious ways to enjoy the humble baked potato. And it's got some blooming lovely ideas and very nice, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Illustrations, very nice illustrations as well of all the recipes. And it's actually given me some great ideas of um, things to put in jacket potatoes. Look at that bacon brie and cranberry. What could be nicer? I actually thought this might be a good Christmas present for a student or something. Students, I remember eating loads of baked potatoes as a student and um, there's quite a lot of cheap and easy ideas in here as well as more 
off the wall extravagant ones but um yeah i thought that might be quite a nice christmas gift i'll link it in the description box below anyway if anybody's interested i'll, I'll link them all if you're interested um everything i've shown you so there yes um the next one this one is called my life on a plate um by kellis who i kellis keyless i'm murdering that aren't i i have no idea i think she's a singer I think she might be in a girl band don't quote me on that um recipes from around the world um again it's a lovely book lovely illustrations um the recipes probably weren't particularly exciting as far as i was concerned i didn't find an awful lot that i fancied making in here but it was nice to have a look through and um yeah enjoyed having a look through it final one i haven't even opened yet um it's called spice layers of flavor and it's by Drew baker who is he something to do with master chef did he win master chef or was a finalist on master chef or am i making that up completely i feel like i know the name i feel like the name rings a bell um there's a picture of him there but yeah, I'm looking forward to having a flick through this one. But as I say, I haven't even had a chance to open that one yet. Right, that's my library book haul. I think this has been the longest book club video ever. Um, let me know if you read this month's book and enjoyed it. If you want to come and join us in the Facebook group, that is linked below. If you've got any book recommendations of anything you've read recently that you think I'd enjoy or other viewers would enjoy, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I'd be grateful if you'd leave it a thumbs up. That's always helpful. Um, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.